Nowadays, PC cases have the option to fit lots of case fans. But how many do you really need, if looks don't matter? Let's find out together. Now, most mid-tower or bigger cases have the option to add bottom intake fans alongside the front intake and top exhaust. If you choose to add all of them, a lot of money may be spent on fans, as cases usually come with front intake and rear fans installed, and most are not that cheap, especially the RGB ones. In the Leon Lee Lancool 2 performance case used for testing, I have installed two Arctic P14s and one P12 as front intakes, two P12 as top exhaust using the same fan curve, and in the rear, one P12 spinning at 100% all the time. The idea behind this fan setup is to promote airflow in order to facilitate fresh air to the GPU and CPU. So, fresh air is introduced into the case as pointed by the white arrows and hot air is removed as shown by the orange arrows. When it comes to testing with different fan configurations, I'm gonna use fan control to simulate the removal of some case fans. For checking the CPU temps, I'm gonna do 3 runs of the Furmax CPU stress test, which is more demanding than Cinebench. After 30 minutes run, I'm measuring the average temperature using Hardware Info 64 for the next 10 minutes. The results that I'm gonna show are from averaging 3 runs. First, we can see the average temperature for the default configuration with all fans running. The average temperature measured in 3 runs sits at 83.4 degrees Celsius, while the maximum temperature reached 84.1. Now, I increase the speed to 100% when it comes to the top exhaust fans to see if this will help with lowering the temperature. This hasn't helped at all, as we have an average of 83.4 with a maximum of 84 degrees Celsius. Top exhaust speed produces more fan noise as well. As most cases don't provide top fans by default, let's see what will happen if you don't have them at all. Will it impact the CPU temperature? With the top exhaust fans disabled, an increase of almost half of degrees Celsius is observed, with averages of 83.8 and a maximum temperature of 84.4 compared to an average of 83.4 when those are running. As it can be seen, having top exhaust fans can help in cooling the CPU when using air coolers. Now, let's remove the bottom intake fans from the equation and see the results. Those, in theory, help more with cooling the GPU rather than the CPU. Looking at the results, as expected, the bottom intake fans don't help at all. Removing the fans that push air from the bottom reduces a bit the average temperature and brings it closer to the default setting, with the free run average sitting at 83.5 degrees Celsius and a maximum temperature of 84.3. Let's explore a bit the fan setup. To my surprise, the best temperatures I got were with the top fan that sits closer to the front of the case removed and no bottom intake fans. The averages went down to 82.6 degrees Celsius with the maximum temperature reaching 83. I also adjusted the exhaust curve and synchronized both the back and top fans. This helped with the front to back flow, but more on this later in the best fan setup section of the video. Let me add a bit of heat coming from the GPU in the mix by running the GPU stress test as well. This will showcase the best fan setup in mix workloads. The default settings with the initial fan setup shows an average of 84.1 with a maximum of 84.5 degrees. With the bottom fans set to 0 RPM, we get an average of 84.2 with a maximum of 84.5. Having the bottom fans on and the top ones disabled, we have the worst case with 84.7 averages and a maximum of 84.9. Having both the bottom and top fans disabled produced the best average temperature, 84 degrees, with a maximum of 84.4, while the best fan configuration reached the highest temperature of 84.3, the lowest max temperature observed in all configurations. In mixed workloads, the GPU will exhaust warm air and the top fans will pull the air upwards in order to exhaust it. We still have the flow from the front intake fans that push fresh air to the CPU, so warm air will move upwards and to the back of the case and the CPU cooler will suck it, resulting in higher CPU temps. I want to point out that because the CPU is at 100% utilization given the stress test running as well, the GPU is barely utilized, thus creating a CPU bottleneck. This is why there is such a low increase in temperature compared to when testing only the CPU. I got the lowest temperature when disabling the bottom intake fans and removing a top 
Exhaust fan. When it comes to the top exhaust, I kept the one further to the back as the front one was sucking clean air from the intake fans, depriving the CPU cooler of fresh air. And this is how the airflow will look like using this fan setup with the heat coming from the GPU being pushed to the back by the intake fans as we don't have the top exhaust one pulling the air in an upright flow. Next, let me show you the fan curve that I'm using. Let's start with the CPU fan curve. My CPU fan speed starts at 60%. When the CPU temperature passes 75 degrees, the fan curve will go up from 65% to 85%. A 20% fan speed increase from just 75 degrees to 77. The next slope is an increase to 100% fan speed starting at a CPU temperature of 80 degrees and topping at 83. The intake fan curve goes from 45% to 100% after 70 degrees CPU temperature. I'm using this aggressive fan curve at higher CPU temperatures to prevent throttling. And this is the exhaust curve that starts at 40% until 75 degrees and then goes to 80%. Next, I'm going to show you how to set up your fan curve. For tuning the fans, I'm using fan control, but any other software will suffice. You should have a CPU stress test in the background running. My advice will be to first tune your intake fans curve and afterwards your CPU. Make sure to have an application running in the background that monitors your CPU temperatures and make sure as well to check the sound profile of your fans at a given speed. Once you found your best curve, you can actually apply it in BIOS and have it running by default. And there you go, button intakes don't help at all when it comes to CPU cooling, but help a bit at GPU cooling. Adding too many fans to the top as exhaust will not help as well as it will remove fresh air that the front intakes will push into the case. So spending too much money in filling your PC case with fans will not help. As you can see on the screen, this is probably the best to have front intake and back exhaust. Add another exhaust fan in the top back and you'll have the optimal configuration when it comes to sound and cooling. If you found the video helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.